up here. And let's go to, oh, where is it? Expression controls, slider control. Let's say um, you want to have like a change the amount. Just select the 10, grab the pick whip, pick whip the slider, and whatever you have this slider set to, that controls the amount, you know, within that position you just selected. So that's just a little little freebie there. So let's undo that. I'm trying to decide if that's eh, maybe up a little bit more, maybe 15 pixels, negative 15 by 15. And I don't know if I'd mentioned this before, but random will uh, create a random amount every single keyframe. So it's not going to interpolate between the amounts. Um, like like a wiggle does. A wiggle will set like a keyframe every so often and that's why you get that smooth movement between uh, between your different amounts. Okay so that is it for that for the position and the next thing we're going to make is the um, is the, the grain. So we're going to uh, let's see here a new solid okay and it doesn't really matter the color because we're going to be using particles um, so the color disappears so we're going to rename it um, to rename just make sure you have your layer selected hit enter and um, black specs okay and right click in your effect controls and go down to simulation and I use particle systems 2 and let me turn off the, uh, the video clip there. Let's go in a little bit. And we're going to turn the birth rate. I think I had it at 20. And longevity. And we want it to be um, to be born and die. Uh, it's birth and death rate between uh, within one frame. So I'm going to switch this to point 0.1. And that should work. And let's go down to particle. Nope. Let's go to producer first. Producer, we're going to take the radius X and bring it out so it uh, goes completely across the uh, the screen and radius Y so it completely fills up the screen. And now it just looks like we have uh, some shredded wheat flying in the uh, in the screen here. So I just got to fix that. So I'm going to change the line to a uh, shaded sphere and the burst size I'm going to turn to I think it was 0.1 that size 0.1 because I don't want any size variation um, between its birth and death. Well, it wouldn't really matter anyway. Uh, size variation, leave it 50%, that's fine. Uh, opacity map, make it constant. Um, max opacity up to 100%. And birth color, black. Death color, black. And let me just put a uh, white solid in there so you can actually see the, uh, the specs. There we go. So now we have just specs that are being born and dying, bur being born and dying within one frame. Uh, the size is a little too large, so let's turn it 0.05 for each one, and that's a lot better. That looks more um, like speckles. Let's turn it to a screen at. Eh, we'll worry about that later. Now let's just duplicate. And we are going to rename this one White Specs. Okay, and let's turn off the white background. And we have to go back up to the particle and birth and death color we're going to turn to white. Now for the white specs we don't want them to become you know, completely solid because it'll be really harsh on the eyes, um, and you're you'll be like, it doesn't look, it just doesn't look right. So let's uh, s put a blur. Let's go fast blur. And I think I had it set to one, and it just softens it up a lot. And if you notice, you won't, you're not seeing the um, um, the black specs in here, and the reason is is that the white and the black specs are literally on top of each other using the same um, same values, so they're going to show up in the same position every time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the uh, white specs and um, in the actual timeline area here, I'm going to grab the bar, I'm just going to shift it down, and then 
re-extend it. So now both the black and the white specs are having random values so they're not overlapping each other. And I'm actually going to uh, increase the blurriness. Well, let me go to max opacity. I'd turn it down to maybe 70 for the white because the white's looking a little harsh. So this is what we got for our specs and our jittering so far. And that babe there is Rona Mitra. And if you don't know who she is, uh, she was one of the former uh, Tomb Raider models. And she's very fine in this movie. It's Doomsday, if you guys want to check it out. Pretty cool movie. Not bad. Um, awesome butt shot at the end here. Anyway, sorry, sorry if there's any female listeners. <coughs> okay, so now we have our uh, jittering clip. We have our white and uh, black specs for our... Um, grain or noise or whatever you want to call it. Now let's go for uh, our flickering effect. So we're going to make a solid and I believe I have this at 50% gray. Well, let's let's do white and if I don't if I don't like it, we'll we'll fix it later on. So again, this one we're going to um, use an expression, a random expression to um, work with the the opacity of our uh, uh, solid here. So we'll hit enter and I'm going to name this flicker. I'm going to hit T for transparency. Its actual name is opacity. And Alt click the stopwatch to get our expression con expression control. And let me just peek at my notes here. And what do I have here? Um, okay, I can just leave it the way it is and excuse me, create uh, a variable, just leave it like that, or I can create value equals a random value between 0 and 50%. And so now we have flickering between 0 and 50%. But the thing is, this only works zero and fifty. Well, yeah, it works. It'll it'll work no matter no matter what, um, because we're actually setting the value itself. Um, it's taking a look at the value and saying uh, we're going to set this value between um, zero and fifty. Um, sorry, I'm getting myself confused here. I was I was thinking of one thing and then something else popped in my mind. Um, so let's. Let's move on. So, so far we have nice flickering and we have the, the specs. Uh, next thing we're going to do is the scratches. So let's create another new solid. And we're going to make this one black. Um, make sure you make it black. I'll explain later. And we're going to right click in our FX controls, go down to simulation and... Oh, where is it? Was it in simulation? Yeah, CC rain. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the amount down to, I think it was 20, and bring up the speed. The speed actually lengthens the size of the, the, the raindrops. Okay, and the angle, we're going to turn the angle to zero. And the angle variation basically tells you um, if the direction is straight up and down or straight up and down in the y-axis, the angle variation is the amount it will vary um, going left or right. Um, drop size is the actual thickness of the of the raindrop. I just keep it to its its default, which is two, <coughs> and leave the opacity. I maybe bring the opacity up a little bit. Now the reason why we had this black is because unlike most of the other particle or simulation systems, um, when you create the particle or whatever simulation it is, the solid color goes away, and everything it's like a transparency. Well, unfortunately, with rain, there there is none. So what you have to do is go down to the actual layer, and in the uh, uh, transfer mode, turn it to add, and the black goes away. But the thing is, the white rain now is overblown because the white is uh, a, va um, a value of one, color value of one. And adding that to the layer behind it overdrives its its one value. Now it's in like the the HDR, the the high definition 